Okay, Regis, I will see you later. In the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can go look for that little boy, the boot black. What level would that quest be? 42. Everything else is starting to become that kind of level, but we should probably go back to the wine war stuff. Are there any question marks near us? Not really at this point. Okay, well, if we want to do wine wars, the nearest one would be... Oh, all the Gwent stuff is turning gray now because we're higher level. Dang. Let's go back to Vermentino. I think this one's closer. The closest one would be... All the way over here. That's still pretty far. Feet as cold as ice. Oh yeah, we also have this here. Level 43. Mm. Let me think, let me think. Since we're here right now, should we try taking a boat and going over here? I'm kind of hoping there's some kind of fast travel point there. Like, we're not really going here for a quest, but uh, since we're kind of in the area anyway, and then maybe we can take a boat to this place, this town, where there certainly will be a fast travel point. How about that? Yeah, all I gotta do is walk straight here. There's a fisherman here. Go your way. I'll go mine. Okay. That's fine. You don't want me to look at your house? That's also Be fine, I guess. Book of me. Oh, before we go on, let's put on the old armor again. Mm -hmm. When we get back to Tucson, let's look into the armor dyeing because I do want to try out some of these other colors. There are so many. So many. Would be nice to get a fully dyed set. Geralt! No! Over here. Unlike Skellige, the waters in Tucson are pretty dang calm. No waves, nothing. And hopefully, no drowners and whatever. No caches in the water place. I didn't put a marker on the map yet, but it's pretty much just directly in front of us here. This entire castle. What is it? Some kind of area of ruins? And there we see again in the distance, those twin peaks. It almost feels like there should be something between them, but I'm not so sure. Could we land on the side here, or would we have to go through the bridge? Hidden treasure chest? Crane Isle! Maybe I'll just get off here. Hidden treasure. With nobody guarding it. Escape artist's journal. Sticky with dried blood. 22nd day of the month of Burke. The worst part of my work's not that I have to crawl through cesspits, jump from great heights, dive into canals, be tied up, untied, lashed, burned, tortured, have my fingernails ripped out, or scraped off while digging tunnels barehanded. No, none of that's the worst. The worst is that I've got a document at all, then hide the notes from the guards. Each escape must be noted down in detail. Otherwise, my employers won't have a basis for releasing my pay. The work of a professional escapologist is not easy, my friend. Oh, this guy's like David Copperfield or something. 25th day. This time, I was given a contract in Tucson. This is going to be a piece of cake. The guards are fat and drowsy and the walls pocked. I was given a thorough hiding today. Those guards are fat and indolent, sure. But they know how to whip. Blast. I think I'm getting too old for this. I'll finish this contract, and then it's time for a change of trades. 28th. Ha! Huh, I'm one lucky horse son. My fellow inmate, a man wrongly convicted, told me a story about an elven treasure trove hidden underwater somewhere south of the prison. I believe he sensed I was planning an escape. I'm supposed to take that sly rogue with me, in exchange for the key. Perhaps 
That's my ticket to an early retirement. Uh, pretty unlikely, seeing as how the journal's here. First day of the month of Blaith. I completed my dig, only to learn I had miscalculated, and exited right into the lake. My companion had not learned to swim, it seems, and now he never will, for he sleeps the big sleep, dreaming of fish. Sadly, I didn't manage to take the key to the elven treasure from him. Took all my strength just to get back to our cell, where a pack of guards were waiting for me. They knocked out a few of my ribs and a handful of teeth, but I should heal. Wait, what's this guy's actual job? Is he trying to document all the escape routes so that the jail people can plug it up and stop people from escaping, or... What? Eleventh day. Things are good. They've moved me to another cell. Bars on the window saw the days when elves ran to Son, so I'll loosen those rust-rotten rods this evening. And then it's into the lake. It's a long drop, true, but that's no worry for me. Then I'll report back to my employer and check out that tale about a treasure. If all goes well, I'll soon be done with escapology. I don't think that worked out very well for him, did it? Oh. I didn't get to see it properly just now, but I'm pretty sure there was um, a body here. A skeleton. Oh, there's an actual cave here? Hmm. Find a key near the flooded tunnel from the other guy. It's gotta be one of you. No. Oh, there he is. Holy crap, how many people- Hold on. We need to take the killer whale potion here. Just need a tad bit of extra time. Look at how many people have died here, my god. So that's the key to the elven treasure they were talking about, and since they're both dead... Now this is gonna be mine. It looks like a lot of them tried escaping through this way though. Just the amount of dead bodies, my goodness. Oh, is the treasure nearby? It's about 200 steps away. Is it on the aisle itself or elsewhere? Oh! What? You've gotta be joking me. You want me to go back there? Okay, I guess we can do that, but I kind of want to look at this castle first, since we're here already. Crane Isle. San Rator Marsh. Little goodies here and there. This is probably an abandoned place just like many others though, so there's not too many things here, I would assume. No people. Maybe monsters, necrophages. Oh, you gotta let me get on here. Oh, there's guards right here. Right after I said how there shouldn't be people here. Whoa, how'd you pull that off? My god. Stocks and the whip await those running riot. Our duchy values peace and quiet. So I'm not allowed inside? I guess not, because I'm not a prisoner, right? I shouldn't want to go inside to begin with. Now why did you have to go and do that? Oh. Was hoping to get a fast travel marker here, but maybe not today. Maybe we'll get to go inside more officially some other time. Okay. I could take this boat back over here, or I could go over here and complete a contract. Yeah, I think that would be more attractive to me. Oh! Tucson Prison. It is hard to believe Tucson, now so vibrant and full of life, once fell victim to a leprosy epidemic. To isolate the infected from the healthy, by ducal decree, a leper colony was created on Crane Island. When all the colony's inhabitants died, the complex gradually fell into ruin, and the decision was made to adapt it into a prison, which it remains to this day. Mm, it kind of makes sense, because Beauclair is all about the glamour and the, the good, pretty stuff. So for the prisoners, they want to throw everybody onto this island where they can't see them. Out of sight, out of mind? 
Don't ruin the vibes of the capital city, so on and so forth. Okay, I just gotta swim across here. Oh my gosh, look, we're actually even getting closer to the Twin Peaks over there. I'm just calling it that, I have no idea what it's called. Seems appropriate though, right? They seem to exactly marry each other. Then that actually seems like maybe in the beginning it was one complete mountain and then somehow by some otherworldly force, the middle section got chopped off. That sounds kind of impossible from a manpower perspective, like how would they split the mountain, but I feel like that makes more sense than two mountains that look identical facing each other. Who really knows? Maybe we'll visit it sooner or later. Printed docks. All right, people here. Curdle snitches. It's a witcher. Curdle snitches. Oh. Come on, Nancy. How about art sweep? Beautiful. Oh, that guy's still half frozen. I love my job. Shut up and fight. You don't have a job. This is not a job. You. Hey, I really like the art sweep. It looks really cool, although I'm not sure if it really helps in getting everyone out of my way. Especially since there's a guy in the distance right now trying to get me with arrows. Ow. Alright, now you're getting it. Oh! I was trying to do art sweep, but I didn't have enough stamina. Life is beautiful death, even more so. It's rather poetic coming from you. Your death such beauty. <laughs> He actually got very close to killing me just now. Let us kill! Let us murder! How fitting that be your last words. I gotta get a shave sometime. I feel like the beard makes me look 20 years older. And if I were to put up my wife as surety, another village liberated. From the north, but if you had to come, I'd still be wet the bridges with fear. Thanks, shoes. They left the bodies lying around. Yeah, this guy's still here. Why do all of them carry so many onions? Oh wow. Four fingers. How have we still not come across this? Kind of strange. Look! All of them have onions! Why? Three for three. Well, I just need to pour without tasting it first. Orders written on a scrap of sow hide. Job's a simple one. You're to comb the warehouses at the freighted docks, take any food supplies you find, and scurry back here to its suite. There is a load of knaves errant around and plenty of her ill-smelling grease's guardsmen. Philibert. Oh, well, I guess I didn't make it back to bring all the food, huh? Philibert. Philibert. Maybe some kind of bandit organization? Forgive me, I'm occupied. Apologies. Yes. Supervisor. Well, I just without tasting it first. <laughs> That's what we all say. Workers, supervisors, somebody working on the roof. There's an armorer here. I wonder if I can get oh them. no. Yet another fugitive from the north. Why are you here? Don't know if you noticed, but I just saved your ass. Yeah. Yes, yes. Though not without a reward in mind, I wager. I know your kind. 
course. And I'll want a share of your beggar's alms, too. Wanted to take a look at your goods first. May I? Hmm. I suppose. But you're to touch nothing, and on purchasing pay in full, in hard currency. Understood? If I really did save you, why would you not want to reward me? I'm not here particularly to look for a reward, but why would you not want to help out the person who saved you? Nordlings, what about them bothers you so much? Apart from the fact that they are all thieves, liars, and layabouts, not a thing. Wow, okay, there's some pretty big prejudices going on here. Show me your wares. Promise not to touch anything. I'm surprised he's actually letting me use his shop. You can have some of this stuff. Yeah, he seems a bit prejudiced, but we're not really here to fix that, so we're just gonna use his shop and probably move on. I'll keep the Tesha Teshem Mutna stuff, because they seem pretty cool. Put it on an armor stand back at home. Look at how much money this guy has, though. It's a random armorer in the middle of nowhere. Probably richer than 90% of Velen merchants. My goodness. Dang, dang, dang. Would you like some random crap? Oh, can I dismantle this stuff? Get some nice jewels? Silver, emerald? See, the ring is worth 260, but wants me to dismantle it. The emerald we get is worth... 2,250. I don't know if we can sell it for that much, but that's a pretty good deal, right? So every time we see some kind of jewelry, I'm guessing we should be dismantling it. Yeah? Let's look at these prices. Do you buy them? No. Maybe not you. Maybe I can sell it to Anna Henrietta or something. <laughs> Back to Tucson, because they love jewelry and stuff, I assume. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Not looking to craft anything in particular right now, though, so thank you very much. Do I have anything else to... Gold nugget? Uh, I'm actually gonna be giving you back some money by letting you dismantle my stuff. This is fine, thank you. Well, I'll be on my way. Gotta go. So long. I wonder if I actually gave him any money. Net. Cause we sold him some stuff, but we also used his dismantling services. Okay, that's Not one more infinite. night contract done. No fast travel marker here, unfortunately. If we want that, I think we should head towards this place. This place seems pretty promising. Yeah, scavenger hunt. In the middle of the town? Or, oh, that's not in the town. Maybe like a nearby village? Why not, why not? And there's also Gwent here. Of course, we'll talk without some carrot to move it. This is Ursine Armor. Currently, we have zero of six. Mm, I feel like maybe I want to prioritize getting some of the armor too, because otherwise... If we get it all by the very end, then that wouldn't be very good, right? We probably want to get the new one and use it as fast as possible. So maybe once we finish getting the Wine War stuff, because that one is really getting a tad too low level. Um... I thought something was wrong with my arm again. Is it? I feel like something is kind of... Hmm. No, it's okay now. <laughs> it was a little bit broken. Tufo Vineyard. We're gonna get a diagram in someone's vineyard? Collapsed building. Foundations probably caved in. Literally undermined. And the people are just leaving it here like that. Because they're not Beauclair. Whoa. Slanting. Oh. Oh. Sorry, guys. Oh, I'm <laughs> really sorry. I didn't see you there. Didn't mean to scare you. There you go. Whoa! Three things in one go. <laughs> Shh. 
Shall we take Gondren the Tufo's journal? The Tufo, the vineyard's owner. 17 May 1943. Finally, a response to my notice. A witcher, big as a mountain and bearded as a dwarf. He asked about the contract, then said he'd take it, for about as much coin as we've set aside for Fifi's dowry. That's some nerve. But I had no other choice. I had to agree. Next day. Witcher claims the problems are caused by some subterranean monster. He searched the area and found an entrance to a complex of caves by a stream in the Marcescent Forest. He plans to enter it through tomorrow. Oh, he plans to enter through it tomorrow. Two days later. The Witcher hasn't returned. Some elf from the city asked about him. Now that's some nerve, giving our address to non-humans. A week later. Enough of this. I'll never hire a Witcher again. It will soon be 10 days since he took his retainer and disappeared. I plan to sell the things he left behind to recover at least a portion of my losses. Too bad, he mostly just left scraps with scribblings that no one will want to purchase. Whatever beast the Witcher was hunting, doesn't seem like he killed it. Gotta keep my eyes peeled. Oh, this vineyard owner didn't realize what a treasure he stumbled upon. Shame, because he probably could have gotten good money for that. Maybe we can pick up the trail of this monster here. Oh my god, there's something right here. Not the monster though, right? This is the vineyard. Maybe it is? Wait, what was the contract? Hey, something is in my vineyard, please go kill it? Like that? In that case, we might want to be a bit careful, huh? Wraiths, who haven't noticed me yet, that would be Spectre Oil. Oh, the freezing doesn't work on them, unfortunately. Ow. Does it? If they're visible when I art sweep, maybe it'll work. Ow. Although for this, I really should be using Irden instead. Speaking of which, I don't think I've tried the alternative sign mode for Irden at all. Once we get more ability points, maybe let's look into that. Ooh, no. That's a lot of dead people. Besotted Clerk's Journal. With a ring. I've decided! I shall ask her tomorrow. A man only lives once. We agreed to meet at our usual place at noon. Clarissa has asked for a half day off, and I'll sneak away from the chancellery. The old foggy of a supervisor will never notice I'm missing. And even if he did, so what? I'm young, I'll find other work. Although, if Clarissa found out I'd lost my job, she might not agree. I'd have proposed to her ages ago, were I not aware how much she fears a life of poverty. She's never said as much, but I can see it worries her. But what are we waiting for? Together, we shall live more economically than apart. And finally, we shall not have constantly to scheme up ways to meet here. I wanted to invite her to dine at the best eatery in all of Beauclair. So many times I have imagined what it would be like. Waiters decked out in golden livery would bring us foie gras and sorbets. Clarissa would sit on a satin cushion, a raven black crown of hair on her head, and looking beautiful, the most beautiful woman in all the room. Then, I would pull out a diamond ring. But the truth is, I shall never be able to afford all that. Not even if Clarissa were to insist a ring of simple silver would be enough for her, and we'd be better off spending that coin to buy a house in Hotteville, where we could open up a shop and she could sell hats. Thus, I shall propose to her tomorrow, in the abandoned wine cave, which serves as our meeting place, our cozy sanctuary, where we have spent so many pleasant hours together. She never complained that our only romantic moments have been spent surrounded by cobwebs and old barrels of wine. But tomorrow marks the end of all that. Once we are wed, I will carry her across my threshold. It will be tight quarters, but there will be room enough for a bed. And there will be no cobwebs. I have only a simple copper ring for her, with a red glass jewel of the cheapest sort. But I promise, in a year's time, I will exchange it for a silver one, with an amethyst, or maybe even a ruby. Oh, Clarissa, tomorrow cannot come soon enough. I think I shall not be able to fall asleep tonight. Mm. 
She's here too. But the ring I just picked up, I thought it was a normal diamond ring. Yeah, a gold diamond ring. We saw two wraiths in here. How did they die? Oh, she's holding flowers. Sorry. Because at first, I thought the wraiths killed her and her boyfriend. But then again, we saw two wraiths here. So it also kind of feels like maybe they died and turned into wraiths. But then if they died, how did they die? Not quite sure. That can't be the beast they were talking about though, right? Oh yeah, no, look at the quest. Find the entrance to the underground cave. Is he learning about the- Oh! Oh, I'm so sorry! I am so sorry! For some reason, I was thinking that we- I had a torch and I was trying to like put it away or something, but uh... Are the guards people okay with me? I'm really, really sorry about that. That was. They say the Duchess commanded Ooh. a pair of shellnock. Ducked down deep and got away. Now, where'd you get them catty peepers? One got away. Could be the one that we saw in that random cave. Floviv. Once upon a time, a plague of frogs visited the San Vitor Marsh. Duchess Adamarta declared a prize would be given to whomever freed the land of these accursed amphibians. Yet neither the knights errant, nor the druids, nor anyone else proved up to the task, until a poor rasman named Vloviv figured out a way. He serenaded the frogs with his violin, and they, entranced by his melody, followed him out of the duchy. In memory of this event, the settlement where Toussaint's raftsmen dwell bears his name. There's a lot of legends in Tucson like this. A lot of fairy tales around here. So the cave where the beast that the Witcher was gonna hunt is here. Not that place that we were just at. Should we go check out the place behind here? What is that anyway? Maybe I'll look at that before I look at the town. So they just have one caved-in building here and nobody even cares. Because it's not in Beauclair. Who can care? Trolling on an empty stomach. Oh, dreadful. I feel for you. This is also part of the vineyard. Well, mine's newer and nicer, so I feel good about that. <laughs> Locked. You got some nice herbs here. Never been a frown that couldn't be turned upside down. Tufo Estate. Might we speak? Monsieur de Bourbeau. Yeah, what is it? Now, why does one summon a witcher, hmm? To inquire about the gossip currently flowing about the court? I have a problem with a beast. You don't gotta be so abrasive. Right, all ears then. Tell me about the monster. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. First, my dear witcher, we must establish ground rules. Given the vast difference in our respective social positions, I'm sorry to say I take umbrage at the familiar tone you take. I expect deference. I expect you to address me as Sir, or better yet, as Monsieur de Bourbeau. Yeah, that's not happening. Listen, friend. There's an enormous difference between us, but it's not about status. It's about me having two swords on my back, and you having none. So I'll call you whatever I want, and you either deal with that or solve your monster problem yourself. The call. I shall file a complaint with your guild. Mm-hmm. Make sure you address it to customer service. Care Morin, Kedwin. Now talk. Before I change my mind and go. Nortlings and their manners. Very well. Let us get this over with. 
Something has infested my vineyard. Mm-hmm. Great. Let me go prepare my something oil then. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Need more information than that. Where was this something seen? Any witnesses? Bodies to examine? Therein lies the rub. None has seen the beast. We've only heard signs of its presence. A strange scratching and shrieks. Neither are there any corpses to inspect. Men simply disappear without a trace. Noises you mentioned. Where do they come from? Well, everywhere. But they're most clearly audible in the wine cellar. Means the monster must dwell underground. Hmm. When are the noises loudest? In the night, just as they were years ago, when the buildings quaked. Another expert agreed to look into the matter then, but was never thereafter seen nor heard of. Who's disappeared, if you don't mind my asking? Mm, most recently some farmhand, I believe. Despite the vast difference in social status, <laughs> you remember the farmhand's name, maybe? No. You wow. must speak to my wife. She has more collegial relations with this household help. She's away at the moment visiting her mother, but should return forthwith. Oh, that should suffice with the questions. Now tell me, will you take the contract? Yay or nay? I need to charge extra for your attitude. Depends. What kind of reward are we talking about? <laughs> There's no need to be abrasive upon first meeting somebody, right? H how much? Do you jest? I kind of just wanted to see your reaction to that. I didn't think you would agree to it. That fair enough? Come now, be reasonable. Even his... The message is more abrasive than everyone else's. People are like, oh, you know, we're starting to get to an agreement. But he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Gosh, you'll be a happier person if you're nicer. Come now, be reasonable. I am reasonable. I dropped it so much already. Come on, like this. Mm, fine. Seems I must take the loss. Agreed. Fine, I'll do it. Need to look around here first. Then I'll want to talk to Madame de Bourbeau. Very well. I shall inform you once she has returned. Meanwhile, the key to the cellar. Just... Whatever you do, please do not disturb the wine barrels. I'll try my best. Does that mean that you're the current owner of the... Tufo Vineyard then? Did the Tufo family all die off or something? Now, Geralt made a really good point with the something oil comment, though, because I feel like <laughs> a lot of people, when they have trouble with something, and they're trying to go to the person who knows how to do something more about it, right? What do they say? They say, help! I can't get it working. It's not working for me. But then they never give you any details about what's actually going on. Like, if it's a computer program or something, they'll just be like, it doesn't work! They don't tell you! And then you gotta be like, well, what's the error message you're actually getting? Give me more details. Don't just say it doesn't work. Not drawing from bitter personal experience at all. Definitely not. <laughs> what's that plaque say? Not much. We've got a very hey, nice place here. Don't you step on me! I didn't step on you. Okay. You want me to go to the cellars after dark. It's currently 1 p.m. right now. Your cellars are... directly below here. I could just meditate, or I'm thinking we can go maybe play a round of Gwent, and by the time we finish that, it'll be nighttime anyway. Maybe look at the notice board back in town. In fact... I wonder if you reach your place in Texas at all. Hello, little geese, you're so cute. No cats here to get mad at me. Who's playing music? Ooh. Huh. Keep it up, kid. Maybe you'll become a famous bard someday. So nice and pleasant oh. here. 
There's an inn. I once had a girl, or should I say, she once had me. <laughs> what is this place? Hard-working peasant's house, who I'm now looting from. It would be hilarious if just one time we come into somebody's house and then the peasant's like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Notice board. Not inside here. Maybe outside. Oh. Yes, this hairdresser. A real artist, you know. Well, he gave up his position at court, saying, Sod it all. And now she's sheep in some meadow. Sheesh, there's no chance that's true. Mm. Money is not everything to everybody. Yes, some the beast. people value different things. And he's to save us from the beast? Why, he's just a... a... a molly cuttle. Hey, watch it, buddy. You don't want me throwing another dragon's dream in your village. Help wanted immediately. Females only. What? Ready work for a young, healthy female, preferably from the countryside. Important. Candidates must have red hair and freckles, preferably all over. Pleasant and easy work. Flexible hours, good pay. Employment is temporary, with a chance at something more permanent. Applications, preferably include a miniature portrait, can be submitted at the Bells of Eau Claire, near the port. Getting a portrait done, that costs money. Are you paying for that? This actually sounds kind of scary. I wouldn't apply for it. <laughs> Announcement! I play the lute, and I'm looking for someone who plays the ocarina. I'm confident that, with our powers combined, we shall be the toast of every tavern in Beauclair, or perhaps even of all its son. Mark Bloom. Advertisements. Fixing roofs, pleasuring women, good prices. Find me in the Skull of the Elk Tavern, as for Luo. <laughs> Confident, are we? She cured my cat! There's no better place for your sick pet to recuperate than the Druidess's hut in the northern part of Duntine. I know folks say there's something odd about that woman. I can't deny it, she is far from normal. When I visited her, I saw her sniff at a handful of straw, as if it were the most irresistible of perfumes. I took a sniff as well, smelled just like a normal wisp of straw to me. She won't look you in the eye, but animals take to her like bees to honey. My tomcat is old and had been getting rather sickly, but after two days at the Druidus's, he's full of vim and vinegar once more. He chases mice like he used to and has a hearty appetite. Haven't seen a cat so happy in a long while. Highly recommended. Contract, the monster of Tufo. I hereby announce the following. The vineyard known as Tufo, which is counted among... Oh, it's the one that we just picked up. My possessions and is famed throughout the world for all the superb Melon Blanc it produces is beset by some monstrosity. Any knight who tracks down the beast and slays it will not only prove his honor, but also earn a reward of not insignificant size. Therefore, hear my call, all brave and valorous men of Tucson, and make haste to Tufo and converse with the undersigned above the contract. Contract, mysterious plummeting cattle. Urgently needed. Specialists used to the strange and the extraordinary must be fast and reliable. Sorcerer, druid, or witcher preferred. Problem involves cattle. Falling out of the sky at night. It must be cleared up fast. What? Work must resume at quarry soon as we're up against tight deadlines. For details, see the foreman of our Daiso quarry. Cattle? It says sick though. Is there some kind of a... Spelling error that I can't think of? Cattle falling out of the sky at night? I can't think of what that would be. Strange. But alright, alright. I don't discriminate. Witcher does a job if you give the money. A high and mighty northerner dog diddled Dunglicker. It's really dark in here. You should read in a more brightly lit place. Bad for your eyes. Ah! I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. Me, My Panther and I by Abigail Lette. Wow, two new books in one drawer. My gosh. 
As a young adept of the art of medicine, I was once asked by my mentor, Nurse Hatchet, to gather some herbs needed for poultices. I set out for the woods and sought ripe specimens, when all of a sudden, a juniper shrub began to swish and shake. It must be a lesion or another monster of some sort, enraged by my insolent theft of the forest's treasures, I thought. Luckily, it turned out the beast was no lesion, but a little panther. Full of pity, I decided to share the bread and dried meat I brought in my bundle with the cub. From that moment on, I brought the panther something to eat every day, and every day it waited for me next to the juniper. A year passed, and the panther grew so big I was afraid to approach it, so I would just throw bits of meat and leave as quickly as possible. Then a sickness left me bedridden for a month. When I was finally back on my feet, I went to the woods, to the juniper shrub. My beloved panther, now as big as a horse, only roared from afar. I bolted. Panthers are beautiful animals, and they are quite fascinating as well, but I value my life, and that is that. Hmm, I know lions, they really remember people, right? So maybe they were just roaring because they recognized you? It's only a month, it's not that long. But then again, a panther is not a lion. Van Grot's Amazing Anti-Flitter Stratagem Oh, I didn't read the entry yet. Flitters are a vile and unsophisticated variety of vampire. They are unable to run properly, cannot bear direct sunlight, and are generally none too wise. Some flitters hunt alone, whereas others prefer to attack in groups. Perhaps it is a matter of instinct, having sensed blood. They assess the size of the victim, and if necessary, summon their kin. The only strong suit of these leeches is their ability to leap towards a potential victim. Fighting a flutter is no different than fighting any other kind of bloodsucker. Apart from the obvious means, such as garlic, buckthorn, and sunlight, a hunter should stock up on silver. A lit torch may prove helpful as well. That's right, these, these books are not written particularly for witchers, so it's not gonna say, hey, use the moon dust, or whatever. Flutters. The vampires we've come across so far, they seem to have very dynamic combat patterns. Like maybe the combat itself isn't too crazy, but they like jumping around all over the place. The Yalps, the Bruxa, and the Flutters. My goodness, they're really acrobatic. Not that one. Flutters! Oh, they actually have teeny little eyes! <laughs> That's kind of cute, maybe. The deceased corpse was completely mutilated. All that remained of the nose was a hole clotted in blood. One eye socket had been chewed beyond all recognition. The mandible had been torn off. Seeing this, Sergeant Dovate vomited profusely, and the administration of smelling salts was required. The investigation had been discontinued, and the deed attributed to a supernatural being. Flutters are classified as lesser vampires, though weaker than the rest of their ilk in every aspect, from the physiomagic to the physiognomic, they should not be underestimated, for they are very, very dangerous. Flutters cannot be mistaken for any other creature, with their wide, toothy jaws, flat, unpleasant faces, and completely hairless, often warty, bodies. These vampires mainly fight with their teeth and claws, flailing them blindly, and not stopping even when their victim is already dead. Even a solitary flutter is strong enough to take down a trained soldier. Compared to other vampires, flutters display meager intelligence, seen most clearly in the mindless rage, which causes them to try with all their might to attack and tear to shreds any weaker being. When fighting flutters, it is best to take advantage of their particular method of movement. These creatures do not run, but they do try to catch their prey and knock it over by leaping. Knowing this behavior, one can plan the fight appropriately and not let oneself be caught by surprise. They are vulnerable to vampire blood as well as black blood. <laughs> this paragraph here kind of reads like Oh yeah, we know how to fight flutters, you know, you do the thing. That's how you fight the flutters. <laughs> They're not really willing to go into the specifics of it. Which kind of makes me suspicious of the, um, the author's credentials. We still got a lot of time, it's 2pm right now. But I wonder who wants to play Gwent with me? Maybe the merchant here? Uh, there's a merchant. Have you seen these prices? I must have Leave drunk a me crazy alone. potion. Welcome, Snow White. Wish to look <laughs> over my goods? 
Are you hitting on me? Mind if I glance at your stock? But hey, flattery is a good way to do business. It makes people happy. Everyone likes to be called beautiful or handsome. It's a good tactic. You don't sell anything I'm interested in, though. Maybe Mandrake Cordial? Just because you were so nice to me? Why not? Alright, that's how you do business, people. Do you want some false teeth? Jar. Ladders. Crap. And this is also how you do business. Sell people random crap. Pouch filled with florins. But we can't actually access the florins, unfortunately. You can have the silver. I don't think we need that much silver. Copper case. Silver tray. Parchments that we can't read. Melitale figurine. But look at this. The average merchant is so much richer than the average merchant in Velen. I suspect a beggar in Tucson in Beauclair might make more in one day than a Velen merchant. Oh, don't sell these. These are precious. Okay, we should be good for now. See ya. Goodbye. Now, oh, you'll frighten me. He's so angry at me. Does time pass by when I play Gwent? I'm not sure, but we're gonna do it anyway. The Gwent person is in the pub, probably. Peak one way or the other. We should arrest that guy. The barrel and bung in. Not a bird theme. Yeah, this has more of a um, in feel in comparison to the really clean inns in Beauclair. Greetings, sir. What is it you need? Hmm. Had wine on my mind all day. What kind? Red? White? Brosé? Dry? Semi-dry? Sweet? How heavy? What appellation? Uh, I'll need to think about it. She knows her stuff. Tell me something about the area, would you? Hmm. What's there to tell? That the master of these lands, Monsieur de Bobo, is the greatest buffoon in all Tucson? Uh, yeah. Already had the pleasure. Or the pain, more like. Oh, wow, they even account for that. Yeah, I agree, though. That guy was not the most pleasant person to deal with. Gwent, maybe we could play around. Yeah, yeah, nod. Nod, lady. We gotta play. We got, uh... Did we get any new cards? Do we want to adjust this in any way? Not really, I guess. We still haven't gotten a chance to do the Berserker thing yet. Do I have other leaders? I do. Units only lose half their strength in bad weather conditions. Nah. Nah. Okay, keep going like this then. You are using Northern Realms, but that card is not one- Oh! Here we go. Cow, Moo, Gondro Dim, Burna Bran. Gondro Dim. Gondro Dim. So we have Cow, Gondro Dim, Burna Bran. Hold on. Berserker, Light Longship, which is Muster. Clan on Crate, Type Bond, Clan on Crate, Type Bond, War Longship, Type Bond, War Longship, Type Bond, Geralt of Rivia. We don't have any status effect cards, but we do have a Medicare, Burna Bran. We have a Berserker, but we don't have the thing to activate the Berserker. We have a few Type Bonds, but, um. Curious about this one. Curious. When this card is removed from the battlefield, it summons a powerful new unit card to take its place. Okay, so basically when this goes to the graveyard, right? So does that mean at the transition between rounds? Is that when you come out? Just not too sure how to use you. Off the top of my head. Um... Gondro Dim would be like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, 8. This muster would be more, right? How many did we have again? 3. So 4 plus 4 plus 4, 12. Guess I'll try Gondro Dim for now. Oh! 
Oh, they were four. It's actually 14. That's fine. Oh my gosh. When do I use this? I don't know. When it's removed. So this thing can't be scorched. Oh, that kind of lulled the lady into a sense of false security because I gave a card that has zero in it. So now she thinks she's gonna win, but little does she know. Oh, I don't have any good cards for this though because I don't I don't want to use my medic, obviously, but I don't want to use my big cards either. The berserker. I can win though. I can win this round. That's why I don't want to give it up. Let's use a berserker then. Tad of a waste. Oh. Oh my god, what is that? Is that a fiend? Bovine Defense Force. Grrr. <laughs> I think some of you mentioned that this is something related to a bug or some exploit where people could kill cows to get a lot of money from the cow hides or something. So they made this card to um, kind of make fun of that. Oh, eight! A good solid eight. Wonderful. Let's go muster then. This is 12, right? No, this is just 8. We only have 2. I don't think this will be useful, right? If we... Just trying to think here. This card. Put stuff in my graveyard back into my deck. I don't have any... So if I do that, I can't use my medic card. Unless... Uh, well, they can't use their medic card either. But they only have Siri here. They have a lot of cards. More than me. Yeah, there's not really anything in here that I want to be back in my deck because I don't have any cards that can draw new cards from my deck anyway. Okay, 16? 10? I might have to conserve my strength a little bit. Oh. What if I use the medic to bring this back? Could I get another 8 for the next round? But then again, at that point, it's kind of like... Why would I not just wait for this card to go to the graveyard directly and then bring it back next round? There's not really a difference, right? The difference would be... I would use a 2 now. So... That would give me a 2 now, but then I wouldn't have it for the next round. It's a little bit less flexible, I guess. Can I win this round though, or should I give it up? Mm. Let's try to use the medic this round. Because my thinking here is, I'm gonna use some cards so I can distract them, make them use more cards, but I'm gonna bet on me winning the third round, as opposed to the second round here, if that makes any sense. So I'll bring you back. And my goal here was really just to waste a turn, so you could use more cards. That is fine. Because I was expecting to lose anyway. But now... Do I want to keep these cards, or do I want to wait next round? Let's... <sighs> Shuffle's cards. So I used my medic already. And they don't even have any cards in their freaking thing anyway. But if I do that, I can waste one turn, right? So let's try... Let's try doing it. My goal here is to waste turns. Yes! He didn't even pass. He decided to use another card. So we're trying to slowly even the grounds here in terms of how many cards we have. Now I pass. Will I be able to get another... Yes! Good, good, good. But if they win... Oh, I forgot about that! I forgot about my Skellige ability! Not bad, two cards. Ah, but because I used the skill, it meant that the only thing in my graveyard were these three cards. Or actually, there's quite a few other cards here, I think. Hmm. It would be better for me if they brought back some other cards, but um, you know, that's more of a luck thing, so... Too bad for me, I guess. They have another dragon! 
Oh, because they drew a new card or something? Because they're the Northern Realms and they won just now. Six cards, five cards. It's time to go all out. Unfortunately, the cat won't be any use at all. Uh, let's not use Geralt because I don't want to push this row up to above 10. Yet. Tight bond. Hopefully we'll be okay here. Ouch! They don't need no dragon. If they brought back the medic, that would have been nice. I gotta remember, I can use this leader card to control what to get back for the third round. And I guess because of that ability, it's always good that we push the game into a third round. We wouldn't want to try to win within the first two rounds because we get that extra advantage at the end there. Forty-three, twenty-seven. Are we gonna be okay? They've got a lot of cards. But I have tight bond. Sixty-seven, thirty-three. Two more cards left. Uh-oh. Good thing Geralt is okay. Forty-seven. Ooh, still one. Not sure what their last card was. But thank you. 100 crowns and... Ceres! That's gotta be a leader card, right? We gotta check it out next time. So I guess from this point on, I'm gonna be using the Skellige deck for all of my Gwent matches because we gotta get extra practice. And also during the tournament, we're actually restricted to using the Skellige deck. Are you playing the song we're hearing right now? Oh wow, check out the this little violin thing they What's got here. Going on there? A lute? I don't know what you call that instrument. But the the striking tool, it's like a twig. I wonder if they still use them for the string. Do they still use the horse hair like they do in violins these days? Maybe not. You're taking up an entire table by yourself. Very nice. So unfortunately, I don't think playing Gwent passes the time because it's still only 3 p.m. right now. That's okay though. We can just chill around the village a little bit or get back and just simply meditate. <laughs>